Right, I'm going to show you how to do one of the required A-level biology practicals. This is required for AS and A-level. And it's investigating the effects of a named variable, and we're going to investigate temperature, on the rate of an enzyme-controlled reaction. Now, the enzyme that we're going to use today is a protease enzyme known as trypsin. Okay, it's produced by the small intestine of most mammals and it's involved in the hydrolysis of peptide bonds in proteins to produce more smaller, slightly more soluble peptides, but also it does make the protein in milk coagulate. Okay, the protein in milk is known as casein. So we're actually going to use powdered milk solution as our substrate for this reaction. And this is the reaction. So casein, which is fairly soluble, would be digested by trypsin to a mixture of small soluble peptides and also it will produce a more fibrous protein which will settle out. Right, so we need to pre prepare our solutions first of all. Now before you begin, you need to actually prepare yourself a water bath. So, you know, you can actually use a thermostatically controlled water bath if you like. Um, I suggest you start at 40 degrees um, and, you know, just a mixture of water from the kettle and the tap until you get, get a temperature of around 40 degrees, slightly higher actually. Now then, next prepare your solutions. So, you need to get a couple of test tubes and halfway down the test tube, using a marker pen, you need to mark an X on one side of the test tube. Okay, you could also label one of your chest tube, test tubes T, that's the one we're going to put the trypsin in, and we could have one labelled as C, which we're going to use as a control. Now, what you need to prepare, into your two of your test tubes, T and C, notice you've got the crosses on the back there, you need to use a syringe to put just 10 centimetre cubed of 3% powdered milk. Powdered milk works much better for this experiment. So it's just your standard powdered milk from a supermarket and make up a 3% solution. So that's what I've done there. So I've got 10 centimetres cubed of powdered milk solution in tubes labelled C and T. Uh, in this tube here, this is for the control, I've got 4 centimetres cubed of pH 7 buffer. So I've used a smaller syringe there and I've just got 4 centimetres cubed of pH 7 buffer. In the tube labelled T here, I've got two centimetres cubed of pH 7 buffer and I've also added to it two centimetres cubed of 0.5% trypsin solution. Now before we mix the enzyme and the milk, we need to make sure that everything is at the right temperature. So you're going to place these in the water bath. Okay, and you're going to leave them in there for maybe five minutes until they actually come to 40 degrees. So you want all your solutions at 40 degrees before you mix them. The next thing we're going to do then, into our tube of milk, labelled T, there it is, we're actually going to add the trypsin enzyme. So we're going to add that. Okay, we can get rid of that tube now. We're going to give it a little mix. Okay, and then we're going to place it back in the water bath. And then we're going to do exactly the same with our control tube, which remember is exactly the same, but without the trypsin enzymes. So we're going to mix them. Okay, just roll it between your fingers, oops, to give it a little mix. And then you're going to leave them in the water bath. Now then, you need to start your timer immediately as soon as you have mixed the enzyme and the contents. Okay, start the timer. Now then, I've already done this and I've actually timed. And what you're doing here, you're actually timing until you can actually see, and this is actually some, and you can see the difference there, that's the control with no enzyme. Here is the milk with the trypsin, and you can actually see that you've got now quite a solid lump of sort of coagulated casein protein in the bottom of the tube, and you can actually see the cross that you marked on the back of the test tube through there for the solution. The solution's quite transparent, but you can't see it at all through the control there without the enzyme. So what you're timing here, the end point of this reaction, will be the point at which you can actually see the X. So you need to watch them very carefully, and as soon as the X becomes visible, you stop your timer, and that is the time that you record. There are other ways of doing this. No, you can actually have a printed X and sort of clamp the tube in front of it and time how long until it disappears, or sorry, it becomes visible. Or you can actually, you know, clamp your tube in front of some printed writing. And again, you know, time how long until you can actually read the text. Okay, and that is the end point of this reaction. Now, what are we going to do with those results? 
as soon as we've got the result of that experiment, we should have to repeat it at several different temperatures. Okay, and once we've got all of our results for a number of different temperatures, we can actually calculate the rate of the reaction. Now, because we were timing how long it took for a complete thing, a complete reaction to take place until the X was visible, to actually work out the rate of reaction, we will just do one, that means the whole reaction, divided by the time in seconds, and that will actually give us a rate. Now, you may find that these are best in standard form. Now, once we've done this for a number of different temperatures, we can actually plot our results to actually see the effects of different temperatures on our reaction rate. So you see here, we've got our rate of reaction in seconds times 10 to the minus 3, OK? And we've got temperature across the bottom there, across the x-axis. So I did it at 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 and 70 degrees. Up here, as you see, our reaction rate, and you can clearly see We've got an optimum temperature here of around 40. Uh, you need to make sure that you can explain what is happening to cause the increase in reaction rates in the temperature as it increases between 20 and 40. You also need to be able to explain what's happening above 40 degrees to reduce the reaction rate. And you might want to also think about why we can't be sure that 40 degrees is actually the optimum 